Welcome everyone, it's week 10 of the Collegiate Aces series as presented by Philly Esports. I'm Hale Monkey Man in the booth alongside Aaron and I know that means that Grant is not here. He's out doing something somewhere and we may just send him all the good thoughts and prayers. But today, Aaron, you and I get to go on an adventure. We are 10 weeks into this wonderful Collegiate Aces series. All these teams still trying to vie for a spot at the top as we get our seedings all good to go. But I need to ask you, we've never casted with each other before, so how are you doing this Tuesday night? It's definitely a Tuesday, if you get what I'm saying. Uh, it's just work. You know, another day. I'm pretty excited to watch some amazing Rocket League play. Uh, it's always great to see more collegiate stuff coming out. Um, as a longtime employee of Philly Esports, always excited to be here uh, helping out as I can. Well, you know what? Hopefully all of you will continue to enjoy being employed or just, you know, enjoying wherever your life may take you because yeah. Tuesday nights right now for the last 10 weeks, we have been made for Rocket League, at least over here on the Aces series. And tonight is no different. We only have three matches, so you got to be ready to go with them. It is going to be Western Colorado, those Mountaineers versus the Benedictine Eagles. And, you know, you were looking at it before, looking to the standings. These two teams really close. Absolutely really close. Here we go as we're getting into the match, the kickoff right now. This seems to be going a little bit into Benedict's favor. I want to see who's going to be able to establish things from their own back halves and be able to maybe take over the midfield. We got to see a whole lot of great Rocket League in week nine. We were a bit spoiled with it. So I want to see if that will continue. And if you're that, this close in the standings, well, I want to see that high level of competition jousting between these two squads. This is one of them rolling in. And our first score is a bowler. Definitely an interesting one. WCU taking the lead, taking that little bit of advantage and pushing it a little bit further. Um, you can see there that uh, Jenkins is just right outside of it trying to get on it. You have a little bit of a miscue, sometimes uh, a great challenge to be able to get through. And I want to see if the Mountaineers will be able to build upon it. They didn't find any such luck in week nine. This time around, I'm trying to bounce back and see if they can take down the Eagles who will contend to score and soar if they can, Jay Henning. With that one just nearby, and Sean looking to be able to get out of the way. Cathedral push this into the blue stripes and establishing a forward run. The Mountaineers trying to be able to chisel their way out. Absolutely trying to, as we're seeing red take control, keep it in blue side right now. They want to score on WCU as it's heading back to the other half of the map. Uh, how are you feeling so far? We're at the four minute mark, fifth of the way through the match already, uh, or the game rather. How are you feeling right now? What are you thinking about WCU's uh, short lead? Well, it seems like they've kind of got one off of a miscue on the rotation, and you can kind of catch a bit of mistakes whenever they just come off the kickoff rotation, especially in the first 20 seconds of play. But it has been now the Western Colorado Mountaineers that have been able to hang on to it. They're under duress as the press from the Eagles has really kept them planted backs to the walls and in blue. The mountain, uh, Mountaineers as they continue to try and drive their way out. I love that Jolly is stuck with that wonderful Lambo. They're trying to stick with some style. We saw them have some great success with that last week around. Let's we'll see if it will turn it all over again. Jolly, an extension, but it's going to fall over to Sean, and the shot's just wide. Just a little bit wide. This is one of those things where we were talking about earlier, you know, the first 20 seconds making a mistake, but we're going to see Jay Annie take it in to tie it up for the 1v1. That was a full court press and everyone else was left to rest. That was JoJo's mojo just going too far. Oh no. And Jay Henney is like, all right, free net for me. A side up at one, just under two minutes in the game number one. Absolutely. Very, very impressive. It's all about capitalizing on the rotation mistakes that, you know, the other team's going to make. In most games, that's kind of what it's about. It's how defensively, how tight of a game you can play until you get an opportunity to kind of get the ball to the other side and get it in the goal while there's very little or to no defenders. Serenity trying to be able to follow up on it. He's going to go against Sean. That's a handoff. Cathedral come up, comes up a little bit too soon. The third man will be on display and in the play. But Serenity says, no, 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 I'm not done with this offense. We're going to get this one going. JoJo's mojo looking to be able to get some kind of clear. It turns into an extra touch for the Eagles. And the Eagles have been able to keep the Mountaineers supplanted on their own goal line. Time and again, they own time of possession right now, but they've not really been able to do much more with it. But it's kind of a war of attrition. You'll be able to just create some mistakes, make them burn some extra boost. It it's very tough for them to be able to get downfield, but clear will come in here. 
Yep, kicking it back into the corner right now. We're going to see JoJo launch it into the middle. A nice shot coming in as Jolly tries to go for it a little bit. You know, we're seeing WCU play a little bit more aggressive right now. Um, but, you know, they kind of got punished a little bit earlier for their mistake. And it looks like it's going to end up happening just a little bit there again as the Eagles come in and score another goal. He caught both Jolly and JoJo in the exact same spot, and Sean was left on an island one-on-one -on -one in the stripes against Serenity, but Serenity had an idea in mind. Get one extra touch before anyone else on the Mountaineers could get a single. Jay Henney now trying to get it over Jolly, and that's going to be a two-bagger in a row. Ten seconds is all it takes sometimes to get yourself not just a little bit of a lead, but a lot of a lead as we're coming into the sub two minute mark right now. It's really good to see the Eagles pulling ahead, you know, doing playing a tight game, watching for those mistakes and capitalizing. Seems like remnants of what happened last week for the, uh, the Mountaineers. They started off fast, they got a single score, and then everything just started to bury them under the soil. Sean is going to leave this one available over to Jay Henney, who is starting to run downhill as fast as possible. Arms flailing and legs going just lollygagging everywhere. But Cathedral with a great challenge to be able to step up. Serenity has been a great initiator, and it's the pressing attack of the Eagles that's given them so many opportunities. Yeah, Jay Henney there waiting for it to get into the center a little bit, looking for an opportunity. They're just keeping trying to set up goals and get these assists on board, but it looks like WCU's actually going to take it back and maybe go for a goal here. Not quite. Ojo trying to be able to send it up over to Jolly, who will get a 50 and neutralizes itself into the corner at the flag post. Serenity's trying to steal it away from Sean. Third is Mojo will elevate, but just not enough height as Cathedral will be able to overrun it. One to the board, and now less than a minute to go on the, on the timer. Jolly with the back pass, trying to see if Sean will be able to bait up. Instead, they are told to vie for a middle touch over to that box. And instead, we will find ourselves going into the offensive half for the Eagles, or rather, for the Mountaineers. Not much coming from it. Less than 40 seconds to go. Jolly tip tapping it up into the air. Mojo in the corner to receive and try and get it on to the, uh, the side of their field for their favor. But Sean blocking them from making an aggressive play there. 30 seconds left, two goals behind, and a dream. WCU is going to have to pull out some interesting things here if they want to, uh, to catch up and put this into overtime. They're going to have to make better reads. They're going to have to do them faster. And so far, being able to play with the clock are the Eagles. As long as they don't overcommit and they just keep sending one man to get a successful touch, this should be good to go. Seconds left, not enough time. Jolly will be able to get a defensive touch. That will go into their stat board. But the one stat that matters is the goal differential, and that's 3-1 for the Eagles. Benedictine will take game one of this three-game set. to see the margin of difference six shots to three mountaineers stuck in their own half but defensively they're only come up as with as many as the eagles and they weren't really ever threatened for very long brief stays on offense and of course the single score that came in was in the first 24 seconds of play here aaron and uh that seemed like it was all of a, just a misplay and was cleaned up pretty well later on yeah, definitely. As soon as they, they got that goal, they were, you know, that's one of those situations where when you're sitting there with the team, if you're, you know, a leader or you guys are communicating, you're sitting there, okay, they got a goal. It might have just been a fluke. Let's pull it back. Let's play a really tight game right now. Let's play tight on our defense. Watch for their mistakes. And when they're over committing, you go in. That's exactly what they need to do here again to take this three game set. We're watching the Eagles already take it on the blue side a little bit. Meanwhile, Mojo back up in the air. I want to see Mojo be just a little bit more consistent. I do like his rotations. They're kind of aggressive, but I want to see if they can ultimately get themselves into a better scoring position. Jolly has been there as well, and JoJo's Mojo will be able to work his way forward, but that is a waterfall touch. It will be the Eagles on the hunt. Cathedral and the weapon in that arsenal for Benedictine is so huge, trying to come from the outside angle. And, you know, Sean, we appreciate you saying rip to Grant as he's not in the booth. But, you know, give, give Aaron some love. I hope you're, hope you're listening to him, too. Uh, yeah, absolutely. We're watching right now as uh, the Eagles have it in their corner right now, trying to neutralize it and get it back in the center. Looks like Jolly going up for a touch there, but it does end up getting contested back out of the corner. We're really watching an aggressive WCU right now. Try to come out, try to get ahead of the game, and, and really try and keep the ball in the offensive status for them. We're talking about on oh. orange side. Most of the time. Oh! There's a goal coming out for Eagles. 
Yeah, this was, you were talking about the, the Mountaineers being able to press up and really just not catch themselves out of bad ways, but yeah. a bouncer is tough to read, especially if it goes right under your teammate and over your head, and you're like, what are you doing? And they just turn around to shrug. 1-0, Eagles in the first minute of play. It's one of those things where when you're playing aggressively, you have to be able to have the skills to make sure that even if you do make a mistake or something, you're getting the goals, you're getting ahead, and you're, you're playing the best you can as the Eagles come in and score once again. Man, look at them go right now. Benedictine, obviously these guys have practiced. Obviously these guys know what they're doing. Um, it's very impressive plays of, of goals and watching for those little misplays uh, and those little missteps. And this is a squad that is all of one place above the Mountaineers, trying to solidify that even more with a possible 3-0 if they keep up this level of play. And they are just not giving the Mountaineers any grand opportunities to really rotate. Oh, that's one of the best shots we've seen today. And it could have been an own goal. Jay Henney is thankful that he has some defensive rotations out of his teammates. And he's like, hey, thanks for that one. And the Eagles now will be under duress only because of that big back pass we'll just call it but they do pick up possession and the pitch will turn on its head definitely a good try from serenity there going up with the aerial touching the ball multiple times trying to get it a little bit redirected so that they can't quite tell where it's going but we are watching just how the aggressiveness can actually um really come off um from benedictine as as a much more tighter offensive plays we're watching jay henny go up put it in the corner he wants to neutralize it get it out of that corner while jolly does try to go for a goal not quite serenity knocking it out of there jojo's mojo's gonna turn right around I'm gonna be real. I don't know which player on the uh, Western Colorado Mountaineers is JoJo's Mojo, if it's a new one or otherwise, but it is interesting to see how these teams are coming up with new players, new talent, new ways to play based on new rosters being able to get to put together. Maybe it is a player that's been there for a minute, but be able to get more intel about that later on. JoJo's Mojo will actually call off uh, Sean, trying to be able to get to that ball first. That's gonna be a shot to the top shelf. Oh. Momentum won't carry it through. Good threat though. Absolutely a nice try there. Not quite enough to put it actually in uh, and, and fully lock and load that goal there, but uh, very scary for just a moment. The loft, nice double tap, and that one will set it up. It was Cathedral that climbed the steeple, said a prayer, dropped it down, and said, hey, Jay Henney, come get your good good tidings. Nice dunk. Absolutely. It's, it's good to be able to count on your teammates to execute like that. That's one of the situations you want to be in when you have teammates like that, you want amazing teammates. Uh, and, you know, all around, most of these guys have been playing really good Rocket League, no matter what the outcome is. Yeah, they've been playing very consistent. And the Eagles, they got scored on in the uh, first 24 seconds uh, in the first game. It's been two games now worth that they have been on, I believe, a 7-0 run against that. With less than two minutes to go, the Mountaineers don't look too jolly, though one of them is named exactly that. Jay Henney, see if he can make a hand up over the Cathedral, and that'll be a big clear. Maybe the Mountaineers will be able to press up. Serenity saying, no, 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 you don't get to press. Trying to play it out of the corner on to blue side. It looks, <laughs> it looks like Jay Henney's got it in the air, man. Just watching the aerial skill of some of these players, you know, I, I probably can't do that, no matter how hard I practice. Um, that being said, definitely interesting to watch these players as they um, take their time when they get it in the corners to, to try and put themselves in a position to be able to score. And that's really what can kind of separate a player who's just running at the ball constantly from somebody who's thinking about where the ball needs to go. How do I set it up for my teammates? How do we end up executing and getting goals? And we're watching red size rotations absolutely good most of the time, absolutely tight most of the time. And then when this happened in the beginning, definitely showing the, uh, you know, why that high altitude that they all live in really does help them out. Yeah, trying to set it up into just zones that become muscle memory. You you try to think, but thinking it just takes too much for when it comes to muscle to the controller and just execution. And instead, you have to just go and know that you've been having enough repetitions with your teammates that it just is all second nature. Jay Henney trying to be able to take that second nature and turn it into an offensive play. He goes into the corner with a half minute and now less. 
Eagles pretty much assured a win here, and they would take this uh, this would-be series, but it's a three-game set. That's how it will be for the remainder of this season, and this is the second time these two teams have met. This one pretty much turned out the exact same way. Timer kind of coming down. Sean will get one more, and maybe they'll be able to get one for the road. A moral victory or otherwise. Serenity gets another, and that one will touch ground. And as they touch grass, it's a pass to a 2-0 lead in the series. Benedictine, the Eagles up as we go into game three. When you know it, it's a very similar shot line. Six to two. Actually, Western Colorado coming in with less this time around more saves they were more contained than they were before and about 75 percent goal participation from the grouping Aaron the Eagles they they surrendered that one goal in game number one honestly we can we could call that a fluke at this point in time but the Mountaineers they're not done with games I just I don't know what what's the what's the key for them to be able to bring more to the table here in game three I think a lot of it comes down to rotations Every time I see him getting a, every time I see Eagles getting a goal, it feels like WCU has got two people in the same spot instead of you know, spreading them out, doing those rotations um, smarter, and that just comes down to drilling. How your rotations are going to be, how much time you're spending, um, you know, thinking about where you need to be. You called it earlier instead of going where you know you need to be. Um, th those seconds really do matter in a game that's as fast as Rocket League, and we are watching the Eagles play a, a very tight game here as they uh, are, are aggressive and they're waiting for the plays and they're, they're trying their best to play that type. I have enjoyed seeing the lockstep runs that we've gotten from the Mountaineers so far. It's just, it takes them a little bit longer to make their approaches and their possessions worthwhile. They are now currently fielding from midfield and better! Oh. And JoJo's mojo hitting that mojo in the top of 90 and that's their first goal since game one. He said, sugar, spice, and everything nice. I'm going to put a little spin on this one. And he gets another goal. That's a wonderful extra touch to be able to find the defense looking. Just when you get cooking, you can be able to get cooking hot. So, maybe the Mountaineers got a chance. Oh, a big pinch will go off the front face of that crossbar. Another attempt will keep it as a save. But Man. Serenity just is going to pull this shoot. Right yeah. back at them. So, you can have the one goal. But hold on, let me show you something. Man, very impressive. Both teams coming out being aggressive. You know, you can tell WCU doesn't want to walk away from the series with the man. No, they are looking to try and be as tied up as they can. They don't want to give the Eagles a freebie. In fact, they are three games behind. Now call it five since they have dropped two in this game, the, uh, being the Mountaineers. Benedictine, they want to be able to get a fat sweep. They want to be able to move up the rankings, maybe move themselves into a number seven, number six, if they can help it. Big try, Cathedral, looking for the double. It's clean, it's just not there. They go too wide. Yeah, definitely a, a, an aggressive play, but almost paying off there. These shots just a little bit a little bit tighter, a little bit nicer. You know, make sure that they end up in the goal is kind of like the name of the game in some regards when it comes down to a game like this. And you're very, very true what you said earlier, no matter how many shots on goal you have, no matter how many saves, the, the almighty diviner of who wins the game, it does come down to goal. It does. Oh, and comes down to consistency. Being there, the right place, right time, all for the efforts of your teammates and what they can turn into. Jolly set it up. Serenity can handle it. And Sean said, you know what? I'm going to be able to create some traffic. They get a second one. And for the first time since getting a single goal in game one, the Western Colorado Mountaineers have been able to reobtain a lead. Yeah, absolutely. Coming out strong here. Uh, I don't know what happens in the, the very small interim between you know, match two and match three of this set, but definitely we're seeing what almost feels like a different Western Colorado. Um, I'm watching Mojo and I'm watching people play back when they need to play back and then play aggressive when they need to play aggressive. We're making those tighter rotations, but here's going to oh. be a close one. Ooh, he gets it in. Not able to cut the corner quite enough to get the ball in a safer position. Jay Henny oh, just, yeah, and Jay Henny just kind of put it in a bad place for everyone else. If you're a Mountaineer, and Jolly was kind of 
facing vertical from their near side uh, uh, post and un unable to really do much more than just flop off the wall and pray they're going to be able to get a touch. So every single time, start thinking that the Mountaineers have their wits about them and have that speed difference finally in their back uh, pocket. Then they just suddenly kind of throw it away, give it to the Eagles, and the Eagles are able to knock things right back into a tie. Yeah, and this is also one of those things that, like, the longer you play in these sets, right, the more and more used, used to your opponent is. And the more used to your opponent you get, the, the harder it will be. And suddenly, maybe if you're a little less skilled than the overall than the enemy team, suddenly you're you're making up that difference just from strictly knowledge. But just look at Eagles. They just don't want to stop getting another goal in there. Uh, Western Colorado has two minutes to respond to them. Hopefully getting in there too. There's a simplicity in just banging a ball on net and sending it top middle into the shelf, saying, I'm done with that book. I'm ready for another. Let me be able to read you another time. And so the Eagles have been able to get two in a row after the Mountaineers were able to get their lead back and now finally fall to a deficit here in game number three. It's taken them longer considering that game number two was scoreless. Now Jolly, oh my goodness, what a great flip and it's gonna wow. go through, takes on the world and ties us at three. That was absolutely beautiful. Amazing bump off the top. Not quite able to get up to stop it the way he needed to be. Uh, Jay Henning's probably shaking his head a little bit at that one. WCU coming out way more aggressive and uh, stronger, it seems like, in this game. It's like our boy Grant uh, used to say and always says, take those risks. If you're not, you're just missing all the chances you could have had. JoJo's mojo. He's going to be able to contend with this one. He gives it away in serenity. That is easy, free, and that's a goal and a lead. Yeah, that's one of those things where he just wasn't quite right where he was on the ball in order to get the angle he wanted to clear it over to the other corner. And it ends up being serenity's in the right place at the right time. Unfortunate, but they still have time. A minute 40, and we've already seen seven goals come through by either squad combined. Shot into the corner. He doesn't have a whole lot of boost, so he's going to have to get the ball in the way. Actually, it'll be a great challenge as it does go across, but no one was ready for it. Jolly to bury it in the corner. It's found immediately by the Eagles. Sean trying to put a shot on target, but a fantastic read by Cathedral. Jolly over to Sean. The passing is there. That will fall just a bit short. Will Sean be able to center it up again? It will come off the wall. Jolly falls just short of it, but so far, the Mountaineers have been able to keep the Eagles trapped in their cage for all of a few moments. This one goes high and will be dropped out and about. We'll have one minute of play remaining here in game three. Can the Mountaineers be able to climb back into the driver's seat? That's what they have to do, one goal down, but it looks like the Eagles are gonna make another goal in. Not necessarily sealing the fate of uh, WCU, but you know, the Mountaineers do now suddenly have a much bigger challenge on their hands, a much bigger play to make. They have to get these two goals in very, very aggressive fashion in order to put this to a tie. It's not over till it's over, but if they get six, I can just about bet that it's over. Jolly, oh, don't do it again. How many times have the Mountaineers been able to give it away into their own box and it's a challenge? There it is, Serenity. They will find it immediately. This has been the crux of Western Colorado. They've just brought it to their own box too many times. You hate to see it, you hate to watch it. Oh man, the the the, the fragile heels of Achilles. It's one of those things we're seeing them put it up on their own wall and just multiple times not able to get the ball out or safely into a corner. And it's just one of those things that it takes practice. You gotta, you know, you gotta learn your reps, getting the ball off that back wall in order to get yourself in a better situation than it seems to be Give all the credit you can to the Mountaineers. They've been able to keep this one competitive, but it's been streaky. It's been fun. And the Eagles, they're trying to be able to fly high, and they're trying to be able to extend their great game lead now by three more. They do it today, up by three, five seconds to go. They've been able to take down the Mountaineers in a big way. They're trying to be able to get themselves even higher up the standings and the ratings. They'll do just that. Benedictine, 3-0 over Western Colorado.
again. The Mountaineers, they could not climb over the shooting margin more than four. They had three in game one, two in game two, and four now here in game number three. But otherwise, that is a tough hill to climb when you have six Teen being thrown at you benedictine those eagles were just monstrous the exact kind of beasts that were called over to be able to get all those hobbits across the lands and you know maybe these are the exact same ones so we'll be going back to it you know aaron this is a this is a pretty good group and this is a squad that uh, in benedictine that's been through the ringer they've survived and they're just kind of that lower third of our competition for the aces series it's one of those situations where when you look at how serenity played in particular just to highlight him for a moment nine shots that is double the total of wcu and it's it's one of those things where when you have a player who can get the shots on eventually they're going to start landing in goal eventually they're going to start getting there and give a player like that enough time and you're going to rack up points and it was one of those things where maybe he was a little cool to start off wcu coming out very mountaineers very strong showing but you just can't you can't keep up with someone like that unless you're getting shots on goal con uh, consistently you gotta win those challenges could be able to win your offense but you gotta be able to win the day and that was done by benedictine and i'm thinking i'm hoping i'm knowing that we're gonna be able to have a player interview it's gonna be with one of our benedictine eagles but it will be coming up right after this